from an uh, enormous circuit, but anyway, I always had uh, good results in street races and I like it. Maybe because I come from karting, go-kart, so you have to drive uh, in very tight corners. Al Unzer Jr. en route here to a first round win at Road Atlanta, sure to get a serious challenge from Patrick Tambay, who's looking to rebound from the spin that he suffered in the series opener. And also tough will be the very competitive Dan Their Life After Indy for 500 winner Gordon John Cock and runner up Rick Mears. At the start, those two picked up exactly where they left off in the Memorial Day Classic, which saw John Cock edge Mears by just two car lengths. At Milwaukee, they were at it again. Pole sitter John Cock had the perfect chassis set up to run a tight inside line. Mears, whose Penske PC-10 looked like the ultimate setup, winning early season kart races at Phoenix and Atlanta, found himself chasing John Cock's Wildcat, just as he did at Indy. Meanwhile, Poncho Carter put his orange march inside Mario Andretti's Wildcat to take over third. Pit stop time, Rick Mears first to the leaders to come in. Murphy's Law says if anything can go wrong, it will. The crew's work is flawless, but Mears stalls the engine and needs a push start. Third place, Poncho Carter, same problem, needs a little help from his friends. And rounding out this unlikely string of driver error, Mario Andretti loses the fire in his Cosworth, proving that former world champions are human too. While the front runners floundered, leader John Cock had a flawless 19 second stop. But that was enough to give the lead to the venerable winner of 67 IndyCar races, the wily Texan A.J. Foyt. His familiar number 14, the red car, stretching its fuel supply to the limit. A.J. made 75 laps, half the race distance, on one tank of fuel. That set him up as the only man who could conceivably run the entire way on a single pit stop. When A.J. finally pitted, John Cock retook the lead, but fuel consumption had become the story. The rules limit the amount of methanol each team gets, and the fast guys were running short. With seven laps to go, John Cock's teammate, Mario Andretti, reported out of fuel, though the team later claimed brake failure. And then John Cock got an urgent radio message. We've had to run hard all day. We haven't had any yellow lights. So we back on yellows to get our fuel mileage. I just had to report to Gordy that he's going to have to switch his injection system over to a lean condition to be able to finish because we're just about out of fuel. A conservative John Cock followed that pit advice and nursed his Patrick Racing machine home 12 seconds ahead of A.J. Foyt, Gordy's fourth win at Milwaukee worth $19,000. Mears was the only other driver on the lead lap. Sneva and Kogan round out the top five. One failed to move on the start. His clutch malfunctioned. In the scramble that followed, Peroni was hit from behind by Paletti. The cars of Raul Bozell, Elizio Salazar, and Jeff Lees also involved. Then as the emergency crews worked to free the stricken Paletti, his car burst into flames. It took nearly 20 minutes to free Paletti from the wreckage. He died hours later of internal injuries. Paletti's death raises the question of whether Formula One newcomers are adequately qualified to drive such exotic machines. We'll talk more about that later today. Circuit, but the weatherman just didn't cooperate. Stefan Johansson, undaunted by all the rain, grabbed his fifth pole of the season. He shared the front row with teammate Thierry Bootsen. They were looking over their shoulders to row two and Johnny Chicoto, the former motorcycle champ, looking for his third win of the year. At the start, Bootsen showed his heels to the field on a day that was destined to be all his. An early challenge from teammate Johansson faded when electrical problems knocked the unlucky Swede out of the race. As Bootsen wet-footed off into the downpour, fellow Belgian Thierry Tassen ran out of traction and stuffed his docking Spitzley Tolman into the turn one arm co. With challengers falling by the wayside, Bootsen stayed cool and kept the charging Chicoto at bay. But by mid-race, well, turn one had turned into a calamity. First, Stefan Beloff crashed heavily. Once he was clear, this turned into a Three Stooges comedy. The marshals were busily destroying Beloff's car when suddenly they had to dodge the spinning Pierre Onecki. With Onecki out of danger, more fun with Beloff's car, and then Carlo Rossi plowed into the mess. The conditions got worse and worse. Officials finally... ...who is the older brother of Rick Mears. Gordon Johncock continues to lead here in Milwaukee. Watcher, of course, from Bakersfield, California, driving that machinist union special.